Okay, so hi your 10. The first thing we look at today is factorising expressions. So here are three for us to look at. I've got 4x plus 12, 3x squared plus 6x, and finally I've got 5x cubed minus x squared. Now the whole point of factorising is to take a factor out of these terms so that we can simplify the term slightly. So for example, this first one, I can see that I've got four here and 12 here. So I know that I have a factor of four in both. So I'm gonna put that outside. Four times X gives me four X. So inside the bracket must go X. Four times what is 12? Well, four times three is 12. So this is the factorized version of this expression. Remember, this whole thing is called an expression. Okay, so the whole thing is expression. Okay, but one of these things is a term, a bit like a word in an expression. A term is just one bit of that expression. Okay, the next one. The first thing to think about is the numbers. We have three and six. So what factor can I take out? Well, I can take out a factor of three from both because six is two times three. The next thing to think about is what can I take out of these terms? I have an x squared and an x. So what can I divide them both by? I could divide them both by x. And if I do that, I put three x outside. Three x squared is gonna be three x multiplied by x, because remember, x times x is x squared. Six x is gonna be two lots of three x, so inside the bracket, I put two. Notice how inside the bracket, I only have one x term, and there's no other factors I can take out. This means these are fully factorized. Finally, 5x cubed minus 2x squared. There's only one number, so I'm not going to be able to put a number outside. x cubed and x squared, well, what's the biggest number I can divide them both by? Well, the biggest number I can divide them by is x squared. So I'm going to put that outside the brackets. 5x cubed must be 5 times x squared, but also times x. So 5x goes inside the bracket. And finally, minus 1. What you can do is you can check by expanding. And if you expand, you go back this way. So going left to right, you factorise. And going right to left, you expand. They are the opposites of each other. So quadratics. So if I give you a quadratic like x squared plus 5x plus 4, you need to think about how I'm going to get these terms into double brackets. Well, let's think about this. If I put them in brackets, I'm aiming for something x, x. Now let's look at another example to see what goes where. So if I start with x plus 2 and x plus 3, remember when I expand this out, I get x squared plus 2x plus 3x plus 6. Now the last term here is 2 times 3. When I combine these two terms together, I add them to get me 5x. 5x is 2 plus 3x, so it's 5 is 2 plus 3. So this middle term, I need to add the two factors together to find the middle term. The last term, I need to multiply them together to find that term. So the first thing to do is think about 4. What are the factors of 4? Well, I could have 1 and 4, or 2 times 2. Now, which of these factors add together to make 5? 
Well, clearly 2 plus 2 is 4, so that doesn't work. 1 plus 4 is 5, so it must be this one. So I put in my brackets x plus 1, and I put x plus 4. That is now factorised. Now to solve it, this is slightly different. So I'm just going to make myself some space. So to solve this, if I said I would like you to solve x squared plus 5x plus 4 equals 0, the first thing you do is factorise it, as we already have, x plus 1 times x plus 4. Now this equals 0. Now if this equals 0, one of these brackets must equal 0. I'll show you what I mean. For example, if I had a times b and that equals 0, then you'd probably be able to tell me that either a equals 0 or b equals 0. One of them has got to equal 0 for the multiplication to equal 0. So what I do is I say, OK, well, x plus 1 must equal 0 and x plus 4 must equal 0. Now, if I solve this, I take away the 1, x equals minus 1. In this case, x plus 4 equals 0, therefore x equals minus 4, because I take away 4 from both sides. I'll give you one more example for this. OK, so we're going to solve this equation, x squared plus 3x minus 10. Now the first thing to do is to find our factors of minus 10. Well, I could have minus 1 times 10. I could have minus 2 times 5. I could have minus 10 times 1. Or I could have minus 5 times 2. Now, which one of these are going to add up to make 3? Well, this one doesn't. Minus 2 plus 5, that does. These two don't. So my factors must be x minus 2 and x plus 5. x minus 2 equals 0, therefore x equals 2. x plus 5 equals 0, therefore x equals minus 5. OK, and I've solved it. Next thing to look at. Similar shapes, OK. Well, with similar shapes, essentially what I've done is I have enlarged a shape. OK, so this sort of carries on from our enlargement. So enlarge a shape. What do you need to enlarge a shape? Well, one of the things you need is a scale factor. OK, for example, if I make a shape two times bigger, this is a scale factor of two. Scale factors are really, really important when we're trying to work out similar shapes. Now, I'm being told these two shapes are similar. This means they're the same shape, but different size. OK, the word congruent means same shape, same size. But these are the same shape, different size. OK, well, for example, this shape here, I have a square. And I can see that I've gone from having a side length of 5 to having a side length of 10. This means I've times my dimensions by 2. Now, this seems obvious because it's 5 and 10. But a way of working it out is that the scale factor equals 10 divided by 5. So the new shape divided by the old shape. So that equals 2. Well, let's have a look at this, this example top right then. Choose two sides that are the same, I can compare. Well, I can compare this 4 and this 12. OK, so 4 goes to 12. The scale factor must be 12 divided by 4, which is 3. So I times my dimensions by 3 to go from my smaller shape to my bigger shape. So what's x going to equal? Well, x, this shape, this uh, length here, must equal 3, which is this dimension here, multiplied by my scale factor. So x must equal 9 centimetres. Y, well y 
we compare to this length. So it must be five times by my scale factor. So y is 15. We can also work the other way. So we could think, okay, well, how would I go from the big shape to the small shape? And to do this, you just do the opposite. So instead of times in by three, you divide by three, which is the same as times in by a third. Times by three, the opposite is times by one over three. So you could do either one of these to go the other way. So here's an example. Two similar shapes, seven centimeters goes to 10.5 centimeters. How will I find the scale factor? Right, well I start by writing the scale factor equals 10.5 divided by seven. 10.5 divided by seven seems a bit nasty, but we know it's gonna be one. Our remainder is 3.5, which is half of seven. So the answer is 1.5. Okay, so I do times by 1.5 to get from seven to 10.5. To go from eight to B, I'm gonna write that B equals eight multiplied by 1.5. So the length of B is 12. One lot of eight plus half of eight, so eight plus four. How do I get A then? Well, A, I start with nine and I go the other way. So I could divide by 1.5 or I could times by one over 1.5. Let's not do that though, that looks a bit horrible. So let's divide by 1.5. Okay, well nine divided by one and a half. How many one and a halves go into nine? Well, if you double it, double it, that's three. So three lots of three go into nine. Therefore, it must be six lots of 1.5 go in. So A is six centimeters. Here's a tricky question. Now, sometimes your similar shapes will be written like this, written in a kind of combined way as one shape. Now, they are similar shapes. This one's sort of been scaled back. So to find this x value, we need to first work out what the scale factor is. And an easy way of doing this is to kind of sketch the shapes separately. Imagine this smaller triangle is laid on top of this big triangle. Draw them separately, and suddenly you get a much clearer picture of what's going on. This one, has a height of four centimeters, whereas this one has a height of six. So the scale factor must be six divided by four, which is 1.5. Now, we know that the length here is nine centimeters. So we need to work out this length here. X is this length in here. So we've got a little bit of calculation to do after we work this out. Anyway, let's find this, this question mark first. So our question mark length is going to equal 9 times 1.5. 9 times 1.5 is 13.5. So this whole length here is 13.5 centimetres. So this length across here is 13.5. Therefore, x must be 13.5 uh, plus 9. So we do 9 plus x, that equals 13.5, x equals 4.5 centimetres. Okay, three more examples for you. On this one, we have two similar shapes. We want to find uh, what this length is here. So, we have 4.8 and 3.2. To find the scale factor, do 4.8 divided by 3.2. Now that's a bit tricky, but we can have a think about it. We could do, I suppose, 48 divided by 32. Um, so we could start with 48 over 32, half that we get 24 over 16. Then we get 12 over eight, six over four, 3 over 2. Uh, that's our old friend. 1.5. Okay, scale factor is 1.5. So to find the question mark, I do 4 times by 1.5, which is 6. 
they won't all be 1.5 your scale factors I know it looks that way okay next one two shapes again similar we want to find this question mark here 12.5 and 5 so the scale factor is 12.5 divided by 5 well that gives me 2.5 so the scale factor is 2.5 our question mark therefore is going to be 13 multiplied by 2.5 Okay, so if we double 13, so we have 13 plus 13 plus half of 13, which is 6.5. This gives me 26 plus 6.5, which is 32.5. Okay, last example for you. Again, very similar to the last one. Now in this question, uh, I'd like to find what uh, this length is here. So I'm going to put a question mark here. Okay, so the first thing to do is think about that we've got two shapes overlaid. So I have a smaller triangle and I have a bigger triangle. Nine centimetres, six centimetres, four centimetres, and this length here I want to find. Again, it's our scale factor of 1.5. I'm sorry, it's not always going to be this way. Uh, but our scale factor, 9 divided by 6, 1.5. It seems the exam is quite like 1.5 as a scale factor. Um, so maybe just, uh, if you don't know, just guess 1.5. Don't do that, that's bad advice. Anyway, so we have 9 and 6. 4, we're going to times by 1.5 to find the question mark. This gives me 6 centimetres. So therefore, I do 6 minus 4, that gives me 2. So my question mark here is 2 centimetres. Okay, so we looked at a few things there. Similar shapes, don't be afraid to redraw them if it helps. Um, I'm just looking back. Make sure you can factorise expressions. Make sure you're happy with factorising and solving quadratics. Okay, similar shapes. Just think about the scale factor and start with that every time. Okay, again, any questions, do just let me know.